We are going to have an exciting conversation today about what's ahead for funding and policy changes related to trails, walking, and biking. I'm Brandi Horton. I'm Vice President of Communications at Rails to Trails Conservancy, and I'm with Kevin Mills, Vice President of Policy. And yeah, we're ready to get into this with y'all. Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah? Let's have, let's ready have, to talk let's policy? Talk about it. <laughs> let's yeah. talk money. That's yeah. always a good conversation. Sure. Well, before we get into what's coming, let's set the stage a little bit for where we've been. Mm -hmm. The past few years have been truly game changing for mm -hmm. trails walking and biking. Tell us a little bit about what's happened. Sure. Well, it was years in the making, but a year ago, uh, the, the bipartisan infrastructure law passed, and it had unprecedented amount of money for uh, trails walking and biking. And uh, it had new programs so that there's you know, more variety in the t uh, types of ways that you can um, pursue this and, uh, and some policy changes that, that uh, create some future opportunities as well. So it's just, you know, quite a, quite a set of opportunities for us going forward that, that came from this law. And since then, we've, uh, you know, had a year of getting the word out. What does this all mean? Well, how do you take advantage? And working with the agencies as they define the criteria and, and yeah. get those programs launched. And uh, and now we're really at a, an interesting moment where where the that money is going to start flowing to a greater degree and uh, in our movement. It is so interesting, advantage. I think, and something that people probably don't recognize that you know you pass the bill and then you also have to do the work with the agencies to make sure that what we interpret in the bill is also what they interpret in the bill and that that sure. program can be put to good work. And you all have been doing a lot of that and, and really deep work. And what we've been saying internally is the why is because this is a once in a generation moment, right? This is something mm -hmm, that really feels yeah. unprecedented. So when you mm -hmm. think about that, what are we doing? How are we helping tap this opportunity across the country? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, first you just get all that, you know, the big picture information out there, get everybody up to a certain level of understanding of what we're dealing with. And then as the, the real, you know, programs and the notices like, hey, you can apply for this program now, come out. Now it's time for us to be, you know, working hand in glove with our, our state and local partners around the country and, uh, and helping them kind of sort through which opportunities should they take, take advantage of, which best fit what they are trying to do and uh, and how to be really competitive about that, how to make sure that this is really accessible to all communities, no matter you know what their income or race or geography are and so on. So we, we, we really wanna, wanna work with folks to make sure that uh, that they're successful in getting their, their trail walking biking infrastructure built with these resources. So this unprecedented moment, mm -hmm. unprecedented funding, mm -hmm. what the policy change is also really critical. So what mm -hmm. changed there that makes this even more unique for trails? Yeah, you know, so one thing uh, we're excited about is transportation alternatives is the biggest program for trails, walking, and biking in the country has been. Um, it grew by 70% in this bill over what it had been. So that's, that's incredible in the first place. But we also um, had had a policy change 10 years ago that made it easier for states that weren't very positive about the program to divert it to other uses, and we we fixed that. We, we, we fixed that problem <laughs> so that it really is, once again, a dedicated program. It really is supposed yeah. to be used for these purposes. And so we're really excited that it's not only more money, but that it'll be really focused, and, and you'll have an opportunity no matter what state you live in, right? Yeah. And then uh, another thing we're super excited about is, is a, a what we call connectivity grants. It's like is this idea that we've built a little project here and there over the years with these existing programs, but what we haven't had is this opportunity to put it all together, to realize that there are great trails and other walking and biking facilities in communities, but they, don't, they often don't connect to each other and to the places people want to go. So we want to have these ability to get some bigger grants that let you get all the gaps filled yeah. and connect people to the places they want to go and to the next community over and so on, right? Like, so that, that's the big advance we've been working so hard for and that uh, th this bill has created an opportunity for us to, to, to make that switch and, and meet that need as our, as our movement has matured to the point that that's what they really need. So that's exciting, mm -hmm. the idea that we can connect these gaps, because there are mm -hmm. 40,000 miles of multi-use trail across the country. Right. So that foundation, that bedrock of trails right. is there. And now we can really create systems that right. are used for recreation, for transportation, for all types of activities right. in the community. Where are we? Is the program done? Are we ready? Can we apply for uh, it tomorrow? <laughs> no, no, not quite. Okay. So uh, what happened was we got it, we got it created in the law that passed a year ago 
but it didn't have the funding attached uh -huh. to it. So we have to get an appropriation in the federal budget for yeah. the coming year, which is being discussed right now and uh, is supposed to be decided this month. And if, if right, <laughs> and if we're successful in getting, uh, and we, we're optimistic that yeah. we get this program included in that uh, new federal budget, and then, uh, and then it will be up to the, the Department of Transportation to breathe life into that and to start taking, you know, asking for, for applications, right? And so we'll work with them on that. And, uh, and then uh, we know that there's an incredible amount of demand out there for this. And so we would be reaching out to our friends all around the country saying, this is your opportunity. I know it'll be very competitive this time. It's not as much money as anyone would, you know, really want because there's, we know there's so much need. Um, but 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 bring your best ideas forward. Show them that there's all this demand. Show them the kind of impact it can have. And we know once once folks do that, we'll be able to translate that into growth for the program going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And you talk about demand, and one of the things that we have seen is folks just reporting into us, you know, billions of dollars worth of projects that are right. defined, planned, yep. you know, really ready to go. So, in the absence of full funding for ATIP, what other ways are people able to kind of leverage this new bill to close gaps in trail networks to really start to advance connectivity? Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, I, obviously we take like the additional money that went into something like transportation yeah. alternatives. And go ahead and apply for all your, your projects there. You'll be able to do more than in the past, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some other programs. One's called RAISE, and it's about sustainability and equity. And this program uh, is also bigger than it had ever been before. And it's decided by the, the federal DOT, the Department of Transportation. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what was really exciting is about a year ago, they had a round of grants under this program and 20%, this is a program that is for all kinds of transportation, roads, bridges, transit, yeah. and so on. And 20% of the money went to trails and another 20% of the money went to complete streets, right? Unprecedented, so, so the, right? right yeah. Totally <laughs> unprecedented that those were the priorities and yeah. that really spoke well to the redefinition of the program around sustainability and equity. We're, that's, we deliver that, right? So, right? so we were very successful. And there was another round last summer, which was structured differently, where there were more integrated projects that you that, that provided a number of kinds of transportation, what have you. But, but the majority of those projects had trail walking and biking elements to them. So we also right. did really well when it was defined that way. So, so we, we like how uh, projects are being prioritized yeah. and that does give us an opportunity with some of these pre-existing programs as well. Some yeah. of the secret sauce that's making this opportunity moment so unique is we've got this demand, we've got these projects ready to go, we have people chomping at the bit for trail networks. We have consumer demand, right? We have people who want and they say they want to walk and bike more, they just need that connectivity. Mm -hmm. We have the funding, we have the policy change, we're seeing some more prioritization of these projects at the federal level. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's also incredible is that as a movement and as an organization, we're even more ready at the moment to receive all of this windfall than ever before. And mm -hmm. We've got right. the Trail Nation Collaborative that's about to be stood up, which is really mm -hmm. a pure learning network for folks mm -hmm. who are working on trail networks all across the country, just ready to seize that money, right, right, right. put yeah. it to good sure. work, prove prove out what's possible, yeah, right, yeah. when trail networks are part of community design like this. So all of this is coming together at a really, I just think, incredible time. Yep. Looking at 2023, what do you think success looks like for Rails to Trails and for the movement overall? Yeah, let me, well, let me say that uh, 15 years ago, we asked our friends on the ground, what would you do if you had an opportunity for connectivity grants? And they were like, yeah, we, that's what we want, but we don't even have a plan yet, yeah. right? And we asked a few years ago, and they said, oh, no, here's our plan. We have a very big vision here and, the, and great needs. And, uh, and that was part of why we, you know, we used that enthusiasm, that demand to help create the program in, right. in this in this bill. And so that that is now well established that, that this movement's ready to take advantage of this. And that's what we gotta do going forward is help the movement take full advantage of all these new opportunities, make sure that more money flows to these trail walking and biking projects so that we accelerate the pace of getting them done. And we know that once we have that success on the ground, that more people will want to have, live in those kinds of communities. They'll see the benefits of it and that we'll be able to, you know, success begets success, if you will. Yeah. That's right. So, so this year, proving out the success, proving out the strategy, getting those funds, putting them to good work. Right. That's what we're focused on. You bet. Awesome. Well, thank you. It is going to be really exciting and a lot of good hard work ahead, but nothing, nothing important happens without good hard work. So That's right. Thank you so much.